If I don't get lip balm on my lips right this second, I will scream. I don't know what it is, but I cannot stand the feeling of chapped lips. It's not like, oh, that bugs me. It's a little uncomfortable. No, it literally makes my skin crawl. I can't do it. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. Today, I am finally going to be sharing my updated morning skincare routine. This has been highly requested since I last posted my morning skincare routine, which was maybe like exactly a year ago now. And I feel like once a year is a good amount of time for me to do updated routines because they don't change all that often, but I have definitely made some key changes that have made a really big difference in my skin. So I'm excited to share those with you. Um, So let's just do this. All right, so you already saw me apply my Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. This is in their, um, hello? Oh, pink lemonade scent. It smells so nice. And look how cute it is. I am obsessed with the little stripity stripes. Come on. I'm not sure if this is limited edition or not. Either way, highly recommend. Oh, feels so good on my lips. Now, to cleanse. I'm just gonna clip my hair back so that it doesn't get wet with this clip that has changed my life. I got this off of Amazon in a pack of several other neutral colors and it's the best jaw clip of that size I have ever used because the grip that it has is just, it's the best. Highly recommend. Actually, before we apply that cleanser, I wanna make sure that I don't forget to mention the fact that I already did my red light therapy this morning. I have been going back and forth on when I like to do red light therapy. Sometimes I prefer to do it in the morning. Other times I prefer to do it at night. It definitely does make me a little bit sleepy because it's very relaxing. So ideally it's something that I would love to do every night, but I'm also super lazy. Like I am probably the most motivated lazy girl I know. And because of that, once it hits like seven o'clock, I'm done for the night. I wanna lay on my couch, I wanna veg out, even though red light therapy is relaxing, like to me that feels like too much work. So I found myself skipping it a lot of the times when I saved it for the end of the night. So I just kinda use it whenever I feel like it, but I have been using red light therapy every single day and I am obsessed. It really just makes the biggest difference in the quality of my skin. My skin looks next level glowy and next level bright and like clear and everything. It's incredible. And if you've never tried red light therapy, you will be blown away by your results within about a month of using it. I'll list a red light therapy video that I have in my description box below. I talk all about it and I also share the mask that I use, which is the current body light. I do have a discount code for current body in the description boxes of all of my videos. So if you are interested in that brand, you can save some money with that code. But otherwise, I think that's everything I have to say about red light therapy. I'm out of breath. Now let's cleanse. For cleanser, I am going to be using the Cetaphil Gentle Clear Clarifying Acne Cream Cleanser. This is a cleanser that I switched to, switched, switched to maybe like two months ago now because I started dealing with some really stubborn texture just kind of out of nowhere. And when I say stubborn, I mean stubborn. It would not go away. And that is not normally something I have an issue with. Tretinoin usually takes care of literally everything for me. But I started getting quite a bit of texture in this region of my face, like my cheeks and on my forehead. So this is one of the changes that I made to my routine. And I have been loving this because it does have salicylic acid in it. It has 2% salicylic acid at that, but it also has other ingredients to help to condition and to protect and calm your skin. So it's not one of those salicylic acid cleansers that is drying. When I said I am lazy, I meant it. I have a bowl of water here because I cannot be bothered to bring the camera to my bathroom and cleanse over the sink and then bring it back. No, no thank you. So we're doing a little shortcut. All right, here is the consistency. Like this. I love that it's a cream. You guys know I am a sucker for a cream cleanser. It definitely does just feel nice and soft. It's not drying at all. And two of the other nice ingredients in it are aloe and green tea extract. Yes. This is gonna be a little bit difficult to wipe off and not make a complete mess. If you'll excuse me for a second. 
second. All right, did I get all of that off my hairline? Let's hope. All right, now it is time for a facial mist, which you guys also know I love. This is also a new addition to my skincare routine. It is the Skin Smart Antimicrobial Facial Cleanser. It's not actually a cleanser, it is a mist. But this is another product that I started to incorporate to help with the texture. Because another thing that I was noticing with the texture is just like a couple of random breakouts in areas that I normally never break out. For me, if I do break out, it's almost always around like this region of my face, my chin, around my mouth, my nose, sometimes going up to the jaw. And I was getting breakouts on my forehead and on my cheeks. And I was like, what is going on? So that is why I wanted to incorporate this mist because it actually contains something called hypochlorous acid. And hypochlorous acid is an anti <laughs> I was gonna say antimicrobial and antibacterial at the same time. Antibacterial. It's antibi- <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> it kills bacteria antibacterial, antimicrobial. Okay, you get it. So that is why that is a great product for anyone dealing with breakouts. It's actually the same key ingredient that you will find in the Tower 28 SOS I think it's called like their facial rescue spray. That product went super viral on TikTok. People love it. And this has the same exact stuff. But because I am extra, I wanna go in with one more mist. This is the Peach and Lily Glass Skin Veil Mist. I have loved this for years. It contains cucumber water, peach extract, reishi mushroom, centella asiatica, ceramides, licorice extract, vitamin E, aloe. And it's such a fine mist. It's perfection, but if you don't want to splurge on a mist and you want to go the drugstore route, I also am obsessed with the Bioma Balancing Face Mist. I will list that below too. Oh, and while I'm thinking about links, I will link this in my description box, but it's been out of stock for a while. So if that is the case, I will try to find another brand that has the same exact ingredient and the same exact amount. All right, now we are ready for serum. I can take my hair out of this clip. And I am going to be applying the last new skincare product that I added for texture. It is the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Breakout Concentrated Derma Serum. I talked about this in my last favorites video and let you guys know how much I was loving it. This is actually a brand new bottle because I just finished one up. This contains 2% salicylic acid plus lactic acid and a postbiotic ferment. And it has 3% lactic acid if you are curious. This is the product that I added to my routine first when I was trying to get rid of the texture and it made the hugest difference. And I know a lot of you guys have also been loving this ever since I recommended it. So it's not just me who loves this. But that serum definitely did not replace my beloved Ordinary Copper Peptide Serum. They did rename this, by the way. I have seen some DMs and comments asking if this was discontinued. No, they just gave it a new name. So instead of it being the Buffet Plus Copper Peptides, it's now their Multi-Peptide Plus Copper Peptides peptides 1% serum, but it's the exact same product, exact same ingredients. Oh my gosh, I'm almost out of it. Good thing I have a backup ready at all times. Aside from 1% copper peptide, this also has a probiotic ferment, tons of other peptides, hyaluronic acid, allantoin, amino acids, sodium PCA, sugar molecules. It's just, it's the best, but you guys know that already. All right, let's apply moisturizer. This is the CeraVe Ultralight Moisturizing Gel, which is a new launch from them. I have been reaching for this constantly in my morning routine. It is so, so perfect for the morning. It contains three essential ceramides, niacinamide, there's a hair in this, and hyaluronic acid, and it has such a nice lightweight gel texture. It's kind of like a gel cream, which I just love the feeling of. It is so soft and I actually feel like it maintains its texture and just and what I mean by that, if you're like, huh? Is that it doesn't get super thin and watery as I continue to rub it in. It maintains that like gel cream feel, which I think just makes for such a nice base for makeup and anything I'm putting on top of it. Oh, I really love the feel of that. Cause we have some more things to put on top of it, including this eye cream, which is the CauseRx Advanced Snail Peptide Eye Cream. I absolutely love this eye cream. It is so nice. Let me show you the texture. Also super lightweight, but a little bit thicker 
thicker than CeraVe, which is why I like to apply this after CeraVe. Oh, so nice. This has 73% snail secretion filtrate, sunflower seed oil, niacinamide, all of them 1000, olantoin, vitamin E, panthenol, hyaluronic acid, peptides. We're just gonna bring this like all over my face because I have extra. Such good ingredients. Oh, feels so good. Okay, while that is drying down, I am going to apply my eyelash and eyebrow serum. I recently started using these again. I used to use both the Rapid Brow and Rapid Lash Serums and they made such a difference in, I'm just using the viewfinder as a mirror, don't mind me. They made such a difference in how thick and full both my brows and lashes are. And then once I stopped, I've returned to looking like a naked mole rat. So I want to juice them back up. I did stop using an eyelash serum altogether because I was worried about potentially getting dry eyes since I had been hearing that that is a potential side effect, but I just decided to risk it. All right, we are ready for sunscreen. Today I am feeling like using the Beauty of Jozon sunscreen. Whenever I'm using an untinted sunscreen, I almost always reach for an Asian sunscreen. So I'm gonna list a video below where I share my top 10 favorites as of last summer, and then a very recent video where I shared, I think, nine new ones that I've been testing out. Beauty of Jozon is beautiful because it is nice and moisturizing while still being lightweight. It's an SPF 50. It has a PA rating of four plus. The active ingredients are all next generation chemical filters, including Uvinyl A plus, Uvinyl T1. <laughs> What? 50, Tinazorb M and Uvisorb HEB. It's fragrance free and has tons of amazing inactive ingredients as well, like niacinamide, adenosine, green tea, rice ferment, soybean ferment, pumpkin ferment, and sugarcane extract. And it just has a really nice naturally glowy finish. This is actually probably the best change I've made to my skincare routine. I started using a little mini fan to help my skincare dry faster in between steps, especially sunscreen since I like to apply multiple layers. All right, oh my, that just got everywhere. Layer number two. Oh my goodness. I love when I know that I have a day where I just get to like layer on skincare and I'm not gonna be putting on makeup. Oh, those are my favorite days. Even though I also love wearing makeup. But you know, sometimes it's just nice to feel your skin without it. All right, now we're ready to finish up with the tinted sunscreen and I'm going to be using the Cetaphil Redness Relieving Daily Facial Moisturizer. This only contains SPF 20, so I don't ever use it by itself, but it is such a nice tinted sunscreen. The active ingredients are titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, plus it also has licorice root, olantoin, caffeine, and iron oxides. If they came out with this in an SPF 50 in multiple shades, game over. I do need to get some separate footage of this for a different video, so I am just going to be applying my application footage here, and I will be right back. I'm sure you can see why I love this sunscreen so much. It just is so, so pretty, has a really nice naturally glowy finish, meaning it's not greasy at all, which I cannot stand, and it feels moisturizing, but it doesn't feel heavy. It's just... It's perfection, minus only being an SPF 20. All right, you guys, that is it for my morning skincare routine. I really hope that you enjoyed this and I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. If you're interested in picking anything up after watching this video, as always, it will be listed and linked in order of mention in my description box below. Let me know what skincare products you are currently using and loving. I am always, always, always all ears for sunscreen and moisturizer recommendations and cleansers because those are definitely the products that I alternate between the most. Serums definitely stay much more consistent, but because I have such a huge skincare collection, I do use so many different moisturizers and sunscreens depending on what I'm in the mood for and what my skin's acting like. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more from me, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend. Thank you so much for doing those things. Your support means the world. Thank you guys for watching my videos. I love the freaking heck out of you. Make sure to stay tuned for my next video because that will be up in a few days. But until then, I hope you have a great few days.